Saseni mkofiti o oh, wanze nimewa hata kama kawaida of course. Mi lazima ni wahate. From Wednesday to Wednesday I have to hata you. <laughs> nimewa miss sana. Karibuni sana to Sales Reflection. Every Wednesday at 11am. Hapa kwa YouTube ya Njukush. So today I am back with someone. Msiali, kwanza mtamuona mshtuke. Hey, sijika mnakumbuka fitness by Steph. When she was here, alikuwa na expect, alikuwa na expect a bundle of joy. We say a bundle of joy, yes, mm. we say a bundle of joy. And today she's back. Fitness by Steph is back. Most of you walipenda sana hiyo discussion ya kuwa kaut ukiwa na ball, kuchapatizi ukiwa na ball. So it was helpful to some of you, to many of you actually, to many mothers. It was so helpful. Na nikasema cha nimlete after fitness by Steph. Karibu sana. Hebu acha tu wakuone. Eh, ni kidogo ningekwambia simama uzunguke. Uh-uh. Thank you pressure. <laughs> Thank you for having me. But you look so good. Thank you. You look so so good. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then I also have someone else, not fitness by Steph Peke. We have a doctor. Today we have fitness by Stephanie who is a pre and postnatal uh, coach. So, yes. yes. And yes. we have a doctor. Karibu sana daktari. Thank you my dear. Mm. Um my name is uh, Dr. Bridget Monda. I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist. I'm in private practice and I'm also a lecturer at the School of Medicine, King Arthur University. Thank and thanks so for much. having me. Thank you for coming. We have a doctor on set, Obi. Now we changa gyna. Obijuyen. Obijuyen. Or obs gyn. Obs gyn. Yes. Yes, that's a gyna. In short, ni gyna wangu. Kona gyna wako. Yes. Do you gyna wewe tu sasa? Karibu ni sana to Celeste Reflection. Thank you. Personally, I love hosting women because I I just love iyo kuempower other women and also i have so many mothers who watch the lens reflection they ask me maswali naona hiyo sijui so acha nikulete mtu anajua so today what you're talking about ni kitu niliona kwa stories za stephanie stephanie had a very interesting about mothers a very interesting conversation yenye mpaka mimi nilikuwa zile za ala 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 stephanie ebu ebu tell them what, what was the discussion about So the background of the conversation was uh, between the, or women talking about having a vaginal delivery versus a cesarean section. Na ili kujaju I've had both now. So the last time I was here I was heavily pregnant and I had my second child this time via cesarean section. But so April was cesarean section awareness month world over so I posted my story. Ndio niambia watu yes nilifanya tizi nilifanya because the assumption is ulifanya everything that you're supposed to do and then you uka end up cs cs and there's a lot of stigma around cs unasikia mtu anaangalia mama kwa usa na mwambie you you didn't oh you chungua mama you how to push that's why they so that is what triggered that conversation because i was like how do you look a mother who has gone through a major surgery it's a major surgery and tell her that she has not had a baby at chungua mama ila uchungua alisikia post operation is me yeah, i think i felt both i don't think it's anywhere close to what uh, labor is because labor gets in asia yeah so that was the conversation na kuli za watu then the statistics show that there's a large number of moms who have a cesarean just as there is a large number of moms who have a vaginal delivery and hakuna mtu yeye mwenye wakaenda shule wanaikwa stamp hapa ti uwe alizaliwa na cs no there's nothing at the end of the day for me as a mother and as uh, even as a human being the most important thing is the mom came out fine and the baby came out fine, fine yeah. i don't care about the details this was in any details now that's why when i say my mother is cs in any normal eh and even i also noticed in my work because i train moms uh, pre and postnatal what would you introduce evo we also label ourselves as mothers so una pata mtu anakuja anakuambia ti hi steph i want to train with you i am a cs mom hmm? cs mom do kusema You're a mom. Period. Yeah, mom. A mom is a mom is a mom is a mom is a full-time mom, a foster mother, a, a biological mother, a mother of multiples. But, a young okay. mother is a mother. So that is where the conversation came from. And I realized there's a lot of stigma around it. And there's some mothers who've had a vaginal delivery, be little mothers who've had a cesarean section as if they had anything to do with it. Hiyo ni Mungu pia. You know, I think at the end of the day and I think she uh, she can talk about that even for them she may have planned or hoped i will go the vaginal way and then come d day 
she tells me as my gynecologist we, we cannot have a natural delivery or a vaginal delivery personally that's what happened and i remember for me now all this time in Majipangia, like normal. We call it normal. I don't know how you call it normal. Nika yes, ni abnormal. I don't know. So me in Majipangia, I've been walking, I have been trying. Actually, every time I go to my gen and I'm back, Mr. Kisias. Juicias who queen jenny member was yes, ah ah push. Sele yeah. push. So ni metembe ni me fanya kila kitu. But come the day day ni emergency CS. Yes. Yeah. So actually we have to tell people it was an emergency. No was it wingilia sana ulienda CS. Yes. Una. Yeah. So you say ah, it was an emergency emergency which sometimes see the case you can choose you can choose you actually to... can't choose it's an option yeah you actually can't choose you see cesarean sections just give you another method of delivery okay so and uh, like you've said um having a vaginal delivery does not mean you've had a normal delivery you've just had a delivery mm -hmm. so you either deliver your baby vaginally or you deliver your baby uh, via cesarean section and with cesarean sections it may actually be an elective what we call elective meaning planned for whatever reason even out of the mother's choice or it may be an emergency either way the most important thing is that the mother goes home with a healthy baby and the mother herself is healthy yeah. so you have two patients who you want to go home normal so it's okay. And stable. It's a very normal method of delivery. It's just another option, a safer option, a, an option that is um, that is planned and easily controlled. With its pros, just the way a vaginal delivery has its pros. With its cons, just the way uh, vaginal deliveries also have their cons. And you know, you don't get a medal for pushing. No. Yeah, you don't get a medal I'm for pushing. For mine. Eight years old. <laughs> I have not so. Um, we, we tend to plan for normal deliveries. Uh, sorry, a vaginal delivery. Let me not call it a normal delivery, for yeah. a vaginal delivery. But we always encourage our patients to prepare mentally that they may end up in theater. And then you give the reasons for a patient ending up in theater and having a cesarean section. Because you know, when there's an emergency, for example, when the baby goes into distress, at that point in time, my dear, there's no time to no discuss. Discussion. You have two patients. You have the baby and the mother. You have to get into that theater and get that baby out as soon as possible. So we shouldn't stigmatize it. Yeah, but that's what Aki Mekweki and Leo Kuinji. But I also I think know. it's because of um, it's lack of information. Yeah. Exactly. And you see, when there's lack of information, uh, people make wrong assumptions about mm. it, mm. Um, have wrong perceptions about it. And if you choose to have a cesarean section, it's your right. And it's okay. And it is very okay. I think that's what I want us to take home today. It's okay. It is very okay. Because personally, I was not comfortable with it. My my experience was different. I look at my mom, uta ikula, uta ka wiki moja bila kula solids. So surprisingly, kesho yake mi na kula. I hate ju matons. Ju madaya kakuja kwa nani kikula mato. Nani hama kwa mi ukula hizi? Ju akukwa na constipation. Like I ate like a normal human being the following day. So hizo nda vitu zilikuwa zina shutu wa hatu, ju tunajua, ukifanywa siyasi. Intestines, that's why I think they are messed up you with. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know. Those are the, some of the stories in the fashion of Opa Really? No. It's, um, it's very rare. Because remember, there's the pregnant uterus and it's pushed everything away. Mm -hmm. So the intestines are on the side and up. So the, this, and you see, we operate just no. in that bikini area. Yeah. Um, Caesarean sections are nowadays very, very safe. Okay. Um, the most you'll stay in, a, in, in theater is about an hour or so. We have moved from doing general anesthesia where you're put completely to sleep mm. to doing spinal anesthesia, which is a lot safer. And that's because the anesthesia does not get to the baby. It, first of all, it's faster, okay? Yeah. And it's also safer for the mother. Then the anesthesia does not get to the baby. So the baby comes out crying the way it would if it was a vaginal delivery. You bleed less, you recover faster. Okay. For CS? Yes, for the spinal anesthesia. You know, the one oh, we do yeah. in the oh, back. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. okay. Then medicine is very dynamic. We're always discovering new things every day. It has been shown that mothers recover faster when you get them ambulate, when you get them moving faster, okay? So you'll find that um, if you're in a proper setup, you're actually encouraged to walk around. You'll even be told by a doctor, please start walking around. Within six hours of the caesarean section, you'll be taking sips of water and then you graduate to soup. You graduate to gradually, uh, you graduate to food eventually. So within 12 hours, you're actually eating. Mm -hmm. Then we make sure that your pain control is good because that way you move around faster, you walk around faster, and then your milk comes in earlier, which means you'll stay in hospital 
a shorter period of time. On average, you'll stay three days. So for example, if you had a caesarean section done today, which is Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, you're going home. Because we've also found that patients recover faster when they're at home because mm -hmm. of all the support. And then you're moving around as well. So caesarean sections are not what people assume they are. You will not be off food for two weeks, the way some, some people suggest. Mm. No, you're eating within 20, 12 to 24 hours. And then we also make sure that um, you're put on medication to make sure that your gut opens up quickly and you pass stool. And those are the things that we check when we go to see a patient after caesarean section. So you'll find on the first post-operative day, second post-operative day, there are things that we look for. And then uh, one of the reasons that we actually get you to get out of bed and walking around quickly, it also um, helps your systems get back to normal faster. And then it prevents you developing clots in the legs. So you see, we, we take mitigating, um, we actually uh, put interventions in place so that you come out with as few complications as possible. So the only difference, yeah, vaginal and CS, it's because one is at a high risk of getting complications. Slightly, yeah, higher risks of, of, uh, of you getting complications. Okay, let me give you advantages of the vaginal delivery. Um, despite the fact that it's, it's more arduous, okay? You labor more, okay? The thing is, you recover faster, yeah? The baby passing through the vaginal canal uh, helps it get rid of fluid from its lungs. So the babies usually tend, out, uh, tend to come out crying. So that's one advantage. The other advantage is the baby comes in contact with the bacteria in the mother's vagina, which helps boost its immune system, okay? You'll find that the, you, you, you bleed less, you're able to initiate breastfeeding faster, mm -hmm. you recover faster, okay? And it's less expensive. So you'll find that you'll probably stay in hospital for 24 hours to 48 hours. We just make sure that uh, breastfeeding is, is initiated, that you, you, you've actually started breastfeeding and uh, that you know how to wash your baby, for example, if it's a first time mother, how to clean that cord, whatever other support that you need, then you go home. Now, with the, with the, the, the opposite of that is now the caesarean section. Fine, you will go to theater. It's true that it is more expensive. It is a fact that you'll be in hospital for, uh, longer, but it doesn't mean that you will, you will take much longer getting in touch with your baby. It doesn't mean that it'll take longer for you to initiate breastfeeding because as it is even for breast milk nowadays, we put you on medication that helps you bring in the milk faster. So it's an option, mm. okay? A caesarean section is just another way of delivering a baby. And it is true, there are risks, more risks by uh, when you deliver um, via caesarean section than by a vaginal delivery. But like I've explained, we put systems in place that will help you reduce the risks of you developing those complications. And if the complications develop, Celeste, we deal with them. We are ready. Yeah, we're ready. We are ready, mm. yes. Now, Stephanie, we may have both, mm -hmm. both uh, now we are calling it not normal, vaginal. vaginal and CS. What can you say about the two since you've had both experiences? I was lucky to have what people would call a Hebrew birth for my first, because I, by the time I got, I had Braxton Hicks the day before the baby came. She was late, so they had told me if the baby does not arrive on Friday, I'm up for induction on Saturday. Thursday, I, I got Braxton Hicks. Nikenda Hosi, Nikambo Abado. Where Rudy home? I was so frustrated. I was like, hey, I went for a walk. <laughs> I remember telling a few friends that I've gone for a walk and they're like, four kilometers walking. Are you mad? I was like, yeah, I was told to keep active. So I decided to go for a walk. Went for a walk. Friday, labor came. Uh, Thursday night. But Mimi, the ninja that I am, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when I went, mm -hmm. I was already at eight centimeters. So I, I, and the hospital was just across from where I stay, so it was not a distance. And by midday, I got to the hospital at around 9.30. By one o'clock, two, the baby was there. And it wasn't it wasn't as bad. I, I, I keep telling people who ask how, how painful is labor, I'm like, it is painful. It is higher than what you've ever experienced, but it's manageable. Your body can tolerate it. And if you have good support around you and you're walking up and down, you're good. So it wasn't too hectic. I wouldn't say it was, it was not dramatic. I had had horror stories and I was like, fantastic, that was yours. Me, I'm going to make mine. Um, for the cesarean section, first of all, the baby was already breached in the third trimester. So the midwife that I was seeing had already mentally prepared me or asked me, if we end up in a cesarean section, are you okay with that? I'm like, 
you know, I, I have one child. I know that children are born also by the grace of God. As long as I'm fine and the baby is fine, really, it doesn't matter how I deliver. So mentally, I was not, I didn't have that thing. And I actually didn't know that women grieve not being able to push until I, I put that post and people talked about I how did. they were felt disappointed at their bodies. I'm like, okay, you're disappointed at your body, but you know, you did not create your body. It is God. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, even the day the baby was born, see Ulipanga, mm -hmm. it, it happens on the day that it's destined to happen. So when I had already started laboring, um, so the baby turned by week 37, now we are no longer breech, so we were told, okay, now we can wait for labor to come. Because if they didn't turn, we were to schedule a cesarean, but he turned. And then now the day before the baby was born, labor started in the night. Again, the ninja that I am, I don't go to the hospital, I just stayed in the house. And then I went in the morning at around six, five, six. But when we got there, the baby was in distress. He had already pooped. So the guy now was like, now? And I could see it on their faces. You know, now you're here, they're there. Mm. And I could see it on their faces and they're like, ah. And so it was a matter of time. So I just told them, okay, call my husband. Uh, where is the paper I signed? I was already ready to sign. Wow. So within an hour and a half, the baby had, be between me being admitted and getting into the ward, and an hour and a half, the baby was born by a cesarean. My cesarean section experience was fantastic. It's funny. But the theater crew was so good. We were talking about COVID, the, the economy is bad. <laughs> And is that in our who is the muscles that we have to do? What do you do? Because that's how we learn to live. But it was a nice crew. It was. I, I keep saying it was smooth and swift, and they made me feel confident in the fact that it is fine. So I was not worried at all. Of course, my husband is outside pacing up and down, wondering how did we end up here. To look at Nangoja, five centimeters, six centimeters, and I had trained. The other thing is people think that because I had exercised all through my pregnancy, I was extremely fit, I was lifting weeds, that I, my body owes me a, a vaginal delivery. No, exercising was not so that I determine the delivery that I have. Mm -hmm. It is for me to have a, a smoother journey. My pregnancy was difficult. If I didn't exercise, I think I would have gone mad. Yeah, it was very difficult. So I exercised to feel good, to enjoy um, exercising during that time. And you to also be healthy. to be healthy. To have a healthy pregnancy. I didn't put on as much weight as my first pregnancy, and as you, I, you were saying, I, I, I stopped telling people that you are snap back. Me, I couldn't have to have. Yeah. yeah. So the benefit of exercising is, I know the benefit. So it was not for me see. to determine. Yeah. You can see the benefit. It was not for me to determine the the mode of delivery. Mm. So it was really, I would say, it was smooth and swift. The team was fantastic. I told them once he turned six weeks, na kuzena cake. So next week na wapele kaya cake, and I go see the guy na. So we celebrate because it went well. It was good. But I and, think, and also as she says, as soon as uh, after being in recovery six hours, then in fact when you are taken from the, the that bed, okay. I was told Sasa, you have to roll over yourself, roll over to your yes. bed. <laughs> I'm looking at her, to roll happy. Me, I about she told me you have to move. And as soon as six hours got there, she told me I get up, walk, and I did. So my entire stay in hospital, nobody got me water, nobody got me uji or chai. I used to walk to the station myself. And every time I go, I pick my water, put it back, do 10, if I can get to 10. Some days were hard, like day two was hard. I didn't get to 10, but I walked every time to the water station and go say hi to the, the midwives at the reception. But, okay, I feel for you, maybe it was easier because someone had told you about it. After yes, she was prepared. Yes, she was, I was prepared. I was, yeah. I was asked about it, but I can't say I had as much information about what happens after that. But you see, before 37 weeks, you were before, like, okay. yes. In my mind, I was already playing with the idea that it could go it, either way, exactly. Yes, and also being, I, I guess, also being a mother, uh, this is not my first uh, pregnancy, you know that there is so little that you can control. So the problem but when you want to say Matimi Nataka Ninaza uh -huh. boy. Uh -huh. Nataka dem. Uh, nataka nataka boy. dem. Then unapata boy. Mm. The, 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 there are things there's that things are that out of your control. Yeah. So in my mind, of course I would have hoped to do vaginal once again, but when the baby went for the scan and then the, the, the radiologist is telling us me I'm like Okay, so what does that mean? That means yes. So it tells us we do another scan, we'll check. 
if they don't turn, we schedule. So, so in all this to Meskia, Zote is gonna pain. CS has pain, normal has of course pain. Daktari, Unezatwambia, can you tell us how much pain Ama, how much pain should I feel for me to rush to the hospital? Like after delivery, especially for the CS. Because mm -hmm. not everyone understands, not everyone has been through it. So, Nambua, Vumilia, just, you eko sawa, kunyo pain kila, it's normal. Now, pain is not normal. Pain mm -hmm. means your body is telling you there's something wrong. Exactly. Okay? So, anytime you have pain, you need to be able to reach out to your doctor or even just go to hospital. Okay, and find out about and you know uh, be attended to. That's number one. Number two, we have pain. Pain. Uh, we manage pain whether it's a vaginal delivery or a cesarean section. By the way, we don't let, let you uh, let you go through all that because um, there's this thing that women are supposed to feel pain. No, it's not supposed to be that. So there are painkillers that we give. You also have the option of a, of an epidural. By the way, something that you probably will talk about in uh, one of your other programs. You have, a, you have the option of having an epidural during a vaginal delivery, which is almost like the spinal anesthesia. It's just that it makes the, the pain of labor more bearable and um, with the be better technology and um, with better science, we have painkillers that actually help, um, help reduce the, the, the pain that you have during a vaginal delivery, which makes it more bearable and a more a, 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 a less odorous, less mm. taxing experience, okay? So there's that. We also have injectables. We have nitrous oxide, you know, the, 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 the one that you give um, through the mask for a vaginal delivery. Now, when it comes to caesarean, uh, after caesarean um, delivery, we give you injectables at least for the first 24 hours. We have to make sure that there's, you're comfortable because if you're not, one, you won't get out of bed. Two, your milk will not come. So you'll find that, for example, um, a nurse will call you and tell you, Daktari, this patient is having pain. Can we give A, B, C, D? And you go, you give the go ahead. You don't really have to be there to even prescribe it because we understand that we need that patient up and about and we need that patient to also, um, her milk should come in as soon as possible. So you're not left to suffer. Okay, you're not left to suffer. Um, and then the next day, because we want you to start eating as soon as possible to get your gut moving, we usually change those medicines, the injectables, into what we call, we change it to oral medication, medication that you swallow. Okay? But even then, we usually give a cocktail. We'll give you like two or three different painkillers that work in different ways. So they synergize, they add on each other so that you, you're actually pain free. So a lot of times you'll find a, in fact, you, if without being told a mother has had a caesarean section, you will not be able to tell mm -hmm. whether this mother has had a, a, a vaginal delivery or a caesarean um, delivery. Personally, I did not feel any pain. Yeah. Actually, I don't remember feeling pain. And then how to prepare yourself for a CS. When you're doing your antenatal visit, these are the things that you really need to ask. And for example, for me, I always tell my patients, for me, I know what I'm looking for when I'm examining you on that couch. For you, the patient, what is important is that conversation you have with your doctor. Write down your questions, because believe me, you walk in and say you'll remember to ask, you won't. Mm -hmm. Write down your questions, save them on the phone or even a notebook and ask, because that's part of preparing for delivery. Not all of us can afford to have Lamar's classes, birth classes. So that contact you have with your doctor is very, very important. That time you have to ask those questions, ask. There's nothing wrong with you going to Dr. Google to find out uh, whatever information, okay? <laughs> and during your chamas or women's meetings. Mm. But then the thing is always clarify about what you have heard, what you have been told. With your doctor. With your doctor. You mm. must always have that conversation with your doctor. I think that conversation will really help, especially when you're expecting, because maybe I had it, but still I had blocked my mind. I was so sure there was no way I was going to have a CS. I don't, I was like, me nilikuwa nimet, nilikuwa, una joyele kukuwa shua, mtu, everything, the journey was okay, mtu ya meshuka, like, you're perfect, you, you're okay. But little we didn't see the code was around the there are no Yes, there are no guarantees, my dear. Nothing. There are no guarantees. So you prepare for a vaginal delivery, plan for a vaginal delivery, but prepare psychologically that you Anything may go to hospital happen. and it'll change. Yeah. Another point in time, the doctor has no time to discuss. Believe me. Especially, for example, if, if the mother is bleeding or mm. your blood pressures have gone through the roof, for example, or the baby is in distress, 
There's no time to discuss things like that at that time. We need to get in and get that baby out. But that's why we are here saying it's normal. It's normal. It's okay to all have delivery, a CS. Yes. Including yes. choosing to have a cesarean section, by the way. It is okay. It is your right. Yeah. Yes. Even if I have no complications. Yes. It's your right. There are people who, have, who, who just get an elective because there's somebody who said uh, on the stories that I quote that I chose to have a cesarean section because I did not want to feel pain. Which is okay. Yeah, yeah it's but okay. But women are there fine. busy bashing one I another think and I'll saying, do that "Oh, for the next one, why go through pain? Ati, why, why, why are you utaki ati utajo uchungu akuza? There's no medal. There's nothing. And and I think um, safe deliveries are so underrated. I think we need to praise a safe delivery. At the end of Regardless, the day, that is yeah. for me. That is the bottom line. That because I've lost, I've, I've lost two, three friends post delivery. They've left babies here. And for that's the last thing you want. So you want to choose a, a vaginal delivery and then end up either you not here or the baby not here. Safe deliveries are seriously underrated. That to, to me is the bottom line for the doctor and I'm sure that the entire medical yeah. team, that is all they want. As well as your family who are busy praying, you are busy arguing with the midwife about how you don't want to go to theater. And then you see, nowadays, because we're doing spinal, for example, you, yes. Stephanie, yeah? yes. you see, you didn't even know what was going on. You, no. you were busy with the, anest the anesthesiologist um, because that's another way. You know, you, you, you're kept distracted. Yes. Yeah. The anesthesiologist keeps you busy talking so that you're also relaxed as the obstetrician does the, the thing in the surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we need and to then you're also able that. to see your baby. You remember, you were shown your baby before the I baby was. was taken to the. I was. Yeah. You were yeah. screaming. He was yes, screaming. exactly. He cried for so long. Yeah. Like, That's my child crying that loud. <laughs> he was so loud. But I, it was. It was. I think there's so much negative talk around it that I was surprised when people asked me how was it, how was the procedure, how was the, the that spinal injection. Like I was like the, the pain went instantly because I was already in labor, and I had already dilated mm. six centimeters. I was already in labor through the whole admission process. So it's not that I was not in pain. I was happy to not be in pain anymore, in fact, and be busy there talking and chatting about cake and, and fitness and COVID and the hospital. It was a good process. And at the end of the day, the baby was fine and I was fine. If we had taken any longer, then we'd be speaking a different, different story. story. That's true. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's the last thing you, that's the last thing you want. Mm -hmm. As you said in the beginning, you are expecting a bundle of joy, but we are here busy trying to look for pain and find it and own it. Eh? It doesn't define you. No. It doesn't define you in any way. No. Yeah. Uchungwa? <laughs> But we try to we tend to make it literally. Tunaliba school fees. Tunasikia uchungu kwa mfuko. Then they say kuza sio kazi. Kulea. Kazi ni kulea mwana. And I tend to agree. Kulea. I think hapo ndo utataka kusikia uchungu. I also think this is a conversation that should be had at baby shower. Women are busy giving horror stories. Yeah. Horror it's stories. Like hey, hey, kanungo. It's called Kanungo. Kanungo dance. Yeah. Yes. People talk about it like it's this <laughs> glorious event that happens there. People are wailing and screaming and insulting one another. Why? I, I wish I wish when I had my first born there was an epidural. Me, I would have saved money for an epidural. <laughs> Actually, me, Aki, I I would have. Why go through it? Like yeah. why go through that pain? I think we've deceived each other and we need to redefine the whole the whole bathing experience. You don't have to feel pain don't no. to amu any mama. No. And create your own. No. If somebody gives you a horror story where they big up them mm. and all the best of them, they did well. Me, me. And then you go and create yours. Yes. And, and and also listen to the medics. They have your best interest at heart. When they're telling you you're going to theater, it's not at that's at they're just busy uh, trying to push everybody towards the theater. No. Actually, like someone like me, my first one was CS. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wapili automatically. I just want us. Why? Sasa sinilifanya CS ya kwanza. What am I trying to prove? But it's a normal tena. At no. vaginal. No. You can actually have a vaginal delivery after, after. a cesarean section. But they, they, there's a, there's certain criteria that have to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. The baby has to be coming with the head. The placenta has to be away from the birth canal. Okay. Uh, the baby has to be less than 3.5 kilos. Oh. For, for you to have a vaginal birth after cesarean section. Okay. Ah. Yes. Then we cannot induce. Then the reason for the first cesarean should not be a permanent problem. Like, for example, you having Pressure. a small pel a small pelvis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then 
uh, we cannot induce. So if you go post dates, it's a it's a straight yes. We cannot augment. You know the drip that we give to in, to um, to increase I, the, I the, the contraction. Yes, wow. that word. <laughs> we By can't the way, use how that. How do you guys create that thing? <laughs> By the way, it's what, do you know what? It's what nature, it's what you produce naturally during labor. I was given that vegan for the first one. And I was like, you expect all that water to get in here. Because as soon as she connected that thing, I was like, the contraction started. What? That one is not fun. Anyway, okay. Yeah, so um, a lot of times, once you've had a caesarean section, more often than not, you'll end up in theater because of that. But it does not mean there, there are women who do not deliver vaginally after having a caesarean section. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Who, but who after who hearing all those, Nili, it's a G3.5, I don't know. Yeah, so many, why wait for so all much, that? The criteria is quite high. Yeah, so why wait? Just go straight Options, for this, yeah. yes. Options. But maybe that's what you want. Me, Options. personally, I think I'm ready to go for another one. <laughs> <laughs> there are some people who time. want. There are some people who want. And if you even look for that hashtag, it's their VBAC. Hashtag VBAC vaginal bath after cesarean there are people who want that maybe they want the which experience, is okay and that's fine that's i fine. think also we just need to accept that everybody has their own journey their own story yes yeah. let them own it allow them to be and you know enjoy exactly. that without trying to make it look like you should do it what is this should and you should women who said? Okay. yeah mm. yeah who so that, that, that needs to stop so i would say both of my bathing experiences were good and they are healthy babies to show for it and wow yeah wow I, I love that. So you do you. Ukisikia the second one, unataka kufanya hivi? Personally, I've decided. I know what way I'm going to go. Because we've said all of them are okay. As long as we have a safe mom and a safe baby. And you have a choice. You, you are allowed that choice. It's your right to make a choice. Yes. So yeah. I want you guys to leave them with a parting shot. Like something to leave our viewers with. Because we still have someone there who's like, hmm. Ah, wana sema nini? Ah, mama wa siku hizi. You know, kwanza mm. they see it like ni mama wa siku hizi. Kwanza sisi watu walikuwa wanazalia kwa shamba. Scared of the pain. Lakini mimi siishi kwa shamba. Mimi naishi fourth floor. Mimi <laughs> <laughs> naishi fourth floor. <laughs> But my story is different. Kwanza sisi walikuwa wanatoka kwa shamba kulima na wanazaa. No, that is true. That is very true. But that is why so many of them died yeah, because of the complications. Oh. You see, people glorify this thing that our mothers used to have. What what were our mothers doing at that time? That's why they died the way they died. The numbers, maternal mortality the, mater- the maternal was mortality high. was so high. Oh. Yeah. I actually thought about it and I, and I asked myself if there wasn't the option of a cesarean section in my own case, yeah. yeah, and the baby has already pooped, and now I have to labor and the chances of my baby coming out alive that's the last thing i want to think about yeah exactly and then so i'm glad that medicine offers me the option to deliver that maybe yeah exactly and you see we've moved for example we've moved from having general anesthesia when you're having a cesarean section to yeah. spinal anesthesia yeah. because the, b- by the time most cesarean sections majority of them actually 90 percent of cesarean sections are done with mothers under spinal anesthesia we rarely use general anes- anesthesia we use general anesthesia when we need how can when when it when it's an extreme emergency mm-hmm. and now it's a matter of life and death we need to get that mother under and that baby out so majority of cesarean sections are done under spinal anesthesia and it's a lot safer than general anesthesia a lot safer Wow. So what? Let's leave our viewers with something after telling them all this. After telling them everything they've had, mm-hmm. what can we leave them with? At least parting shot. Kuna ole moya kwa po sai. Ako ready next week to deliver. Ako very like ako near, but bado ame katas yes. We are not saying vaginal limbaya, mm-hmm. but try not to shindana with the healthcare. Waki kuambia ivi. So yeah. what can you tell them, especially to the? The ones who are almost giving birth. I guess for me, it's just what I what I posted that safe deliveries are underrated. Yeah. At the end of the day, think about your life. Your life matters, and the life of that child. So, and and for anybody who has an expectant or pregnant mom in their life, the prayer you should be making is that they have a safe delivery. That's it for Whether me. Yes. Yes. However, okay. it comes, and and that it will be, at the end of the day, it will be a safe delivery. She will leave the hospital, and so will the baby. That's that. That for me is the bottom line. And Dr. Um, a safe delivery is either vaginal delivery or cesarean section, and um, you deliver as planned, but prepare yourself for any eventuality. So plan for a vaginal delivery if you so wish, but then keep an open mind. 
that you may end up, you may have to end up in theater having a cesarean section, and even that is okay. Mm -hmm. You don't get a medal for pushing. We want um, we want you and the baby to go home healthy, and safe and normal. And me, I'll tell you, pain, pain. Please consult. Usikaze your pain. Pain si mzuri. It's not a something at a. We are going to say, mini let's get uchungu. Atu pimanishi uchungu. Once you feel like you're feeling pain, Dr. has said, please reach out. Reach out, especially for the new moms. Hatu juangi, so tuna kwanga tumekaza. Nasike uchungu, but I want to be brave. I want to be seen like I've, uh, like I've handled pain. No, mm. please, when you feel pain, reach out to your gyna, doctor, just reach out. Yes, and thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. I wish we would talk longer because na feel hapa kuna vitu mingi sana za kuongelea. And we normalize us yes, to normalize to you. Either I'm as a simulator, what is that? At you, what is that? I'm a mtoto. That's the whole point. I'm a bouncing baby boy. I'm a, I'm a blessing. You start to enjoy what is that? Mutoto ndoyo alishafika and they are both okay. So thank you so much for watching Celeste Reflection. Thank you for tuning in onto this YouTube channel, Asante Nisana, and thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much, Dr. I know you're very busy. Sayo ungekua unasaidia wa mama pale lakini umekuja Asante Nisana. Thanks for having me. I hope you're going to come back again. Yes. There's a lot more we can, hapo kwa epidural. I think, before I give birth, I have... I have to meet you two again. Aza kusave kwanza. Tizi nilisha kubali, nitafanya tizi. Tifanya tizi. Before and after. Sasa nataka kujua epidural. Thank you so much, guys. See you next week on Celeste Reflection. Bye.